This is a religious belief for Democrats. They, they will invoke the Defense Production Act in the Biden administration for solar panels. But when it comes to gas, every gas uh, company CEO you speak to, everybody who understands the international energy markets will tell you that the Biden regime is psychotically, deeply ideologically opposed to fossil fuels. And we are all poorer as a result. As a country, our national security and economic status is harmed by this. The Fed chair, I mean, it's a tough day. What does the Fed exist to do? What are they supposed to be getting done as their primary, you know, you know the thing, you know, you had one job. What's the Fed's one job? It's really to manage inflation. That's the primary thing. Have they done a good job of that? Does anybody think that the Fed looks like they're on it? Looks like they've known what's going on here? No, if anything, politics have been driving so much of the economic decision making uh, in a reckless and an irresponsible fashion. And this was true during the pandemic when we had, you, you got to know some of these numbers. It's jaw dropping when you really start to, to pull it all, to piece it all together. Between 2019 and August 2021, this was in the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. money supply grew by $5.5 trillion. That is a 35% increase in the money supply in a year and a half. And this was mostly driven by the Fed's purchases of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So by the end of 2024, the journal estimates the money supply will grow another $5 trillion. We are running an experiment to see how quickly we can get inflation to go in the wrong direction. Or we have been running that experiment until they finally started bringing rates up. And now we're in for the pain. This is all cause and effect. You know, if you run up credit card bills, if you spend too much money on a credit card, it can, in the beginning, it's great. You're like, I'm just, look at me. I got a, I've got a new jet ski. I've just bought a whole bunch of uh, new golf clubs. I've got, you know, whatever it is, right? And it can feel like, well, that's not, not anything to worry about because it just goes on my credit card. But yeah, then you have to start paying the balance down. And if you don't do that, then you have to start dealing with the 20% or 29% APR, whatever it is. This is how people really get behind, right? As you know, first thing you want to pay down is high interest, uh, high interest things like credit cards whenever you can. But a lot of people are going to be running up those, those credit card bills right now because of the overall trajectory of the economy. But it's cause and effect for you as an individual. Why isn't that clear at the government level as well? You print too much money, you're going to have inflation. Some of us were saying, including me, you can't shut down your economy because there's a virus out there that you're not going to stop anyway. You can't just send people checks to stay home. There's going to be a hangover from this. Welcome to the hangover. You can't just spend $2 trillion, as Joe Biden did, right off the bat when he comes into office. In addition to, I just told you about the trillions that were spent to expand the monetary supply, the money supply. What do they think was going to happen? That's the, that's what I really want to ask some of these people. I want to ask, you know, Jerome Powell, I want to ask some of these experts. What exactly did you think the result was going to be? You thought it wouldn't be this? Remember, they thought inflation was going to be, they told us inflation would be transitory. And that was absurd. They've also been saying for months now and up until the last few days, there won't be a recession. We are in a recession. And I don't think it's going to be a quick one. I think it's going to get ugly out there in the economy for at least 12 to 18 months. It's going to be a lot of economic suffering. It's going to be job losses. You're probably heading into the stagflation that we saw in the 70s and the early 80s. This was preventable, but there were people in charge who made really bad decisions. And that's the part of this that there has to be accountability for. And they're doing everything they can right now. I mean, the spin you will feel, you're going to get dizzy from it. You're going to get dizzy from it. Um, oh, it's not really a recession. Oh, this is just, we're on the right path. What does the wrong path feel like? Someone should ask Joe Biden that. If this is the right path, what is the wrong path? 
How, how does that look? 15% inflation? 20% inflation? I think, you know, if we turn into Venezuela, I think we're all going to realize that we're on the wrong path. But uh, what are our expectations? Biden told us that he would shut down, shut down the virus. He would not shut down the economy. Which one of those feels like it's been more shut down exactly? Here you go. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is trying to tell everybody um, that he's not about to get into the definitions of this. They don't make a judgment on that. But, you know, there's some good stuff. So the, the Fed doesn't make a doesn't make a judgment on that. You know, we're, we're focused on the dual mandate and using our tools to achieve maximum employment and price stability. We don't we don't say there is now a recession, that kind of thing. So that, that wouldn't be something we do. We, we would look at the at the data tomorrow and and we're, no doubt we'll look at it very carefully and draw whatever implications we can. I, as I mentioned, though, um, you know, if you think about what 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 an inflation, what, what sorry, what a recession really is, it's a broad based decline across many industries that, um, you know, that's sustained for more than a couple of months. And there are a bunch of specific tests in it. And, and it just doesn't this doesn't seem like that. Now, what we have right now doesn't seem like that. And the, the real reason is that the labor market is just sending such a strong a signal of economic strength that it makes you really question the GDP data. But again, that's not a decision that, that we uh, that we make. And we won't we won't reach a conclusion one way or another on that. They keep telling us how great the labor market is. I come across individuals all the time who are saying they can't get people to do jobs. And and so they're limited in their productivity, everything from people in aerospace and defense to restaurants to you know operating your local department store or drug store or whatever. They can't get workers. This is the this is how the the great labor market is supposed to be operating and then you say, "Well, shouldn't they just pay them more? They'll get them." Well, they say they can't. There's supply chain disruptions. They've already had to raise prices. In fact, they're raising prices. Some of the biggest companies in the world. There was a big piece uh, earlier the week, early this week in the journal about that too. They're just going to pass. You think you felt the costs already? More costs are going to be passed on to the consumer. But what do you think the people in charge? What do you think Biden, his economic propagandists, the uh, Fed chairman? What, what do you think they're going to say? Sorry, we're idiots. No, of course not. They're going to say, "Oh, this is great." In fact, this was the best. The White House trying to tell the American people that the recession, you think recession means bad things. But let me tell you, peasants, White House wants you to know the recession is actually really good and healthy. All signs are that this is a strong economy and the probability of a recession within the next year is not particularly elevated. It's a strong economy and, and nothing about it suggests that it's that it's close to or vulnerable to. A recession. I don't expect a recession. No, no one is predicting a recession now. We are not expecting that we are already in the recession. In fact, the guts and the bones of this economy remain strong. These are not the marks of an economy in recession. Right now, we don't see a recession. Right now, that is not, we're not in a recession right now. This is not an economy that's in recession. Not only is a recession not inevitable, but I think that a lot of people are underestimating those strengths and the resilience of the American economy. We have a strong labor market, which you don't normally see in a recession. A recession is broad-based weakness in the economy. We're not seeing that now. In your view, is a recession in the United States inevitable? No. Typically, economists date a recession as being at least two quarters of negative growth uh, and, other com and other factors, which we have not seen at all. The idea that uh, two quarters of negative GDP growth is a technical definition of a recession is wrong. A common definition of recession is two negative quarters of GDP growth. Two quarters of negative growth in a row, that's a recession. Right, and certainly the, in terms of the technical definition, it's not a recession. The technical definition considers a much broader spectrum uh, of data points. What is exactly the White House's definition of a recession? Again, we don't, we don't, def I'm not going to define it from here. How worried should Americans be that we could be in a recession? We're not going to be in a recession. Nobody, including especially the White House and especially Joe Biden, is going to sugarcoat any of this. Well, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about a recession. And, I mean, you're always concerned about uh, a recession. Does anybody feel like this is a good economy? I would love that explanation from people that are just trying to pay their bills and have some financial stability in their lives. They feel like things are going well right now. 
A lot of people miss that era of the mean tweets. You know that guy that was in charge that they said was doing Russia's bidding. The stock market was booming. Unemployment, real unemployment was very low. Labor force participation, they keep talking about the unemployment rate. You still have millions of millions of pe- fewer people working now than before the pandemic. Oh, but it's a Biden's created millions of jobs. Yeah. Just feel all that prosperity while you're paying 430 a gallon for gas and everything you're buying at the grocery store is 15 to 20 percent more expensive and your wages aren't keeping up with inflation. And yeah, all that prosperity. They just want to evade accountability, folks. So they'll lie to you. That's what this really comes down to. They want to evade accountability for their bad decision making for their belief that they know how to allocate the capital of the American people better than the market. That's what's going on. Now we're all seeing it, we're all feeling it. Joe Manchin's 700 page trillion dollar tax and spend bill is probably the longest suicide note in the history of West Virginia. At a time when West Virginians and Americans are paying four and five dollar a gallon for gas, what, is, what do the Democrats now propose to do? To spend hundreds of billions of dollars more, to sick the IRS on hardworking American families. It's only going to drive up inflation more and cost people their jobs. I would also point out, Laura, this is a huge, huge amount of spending. When you add it on to the $250 billion spending that the, House, that the Senate passed today, that the House is voting on tomorrow, and I would urge every House Republican after this double cross not to support that $250 billion spending bill on semiconductors and other things, most of which is just going to end up benefiting China anyway. Welcome back to Clay and Buck. This is Buck here in NYC. Clay on the live golf course right now. So I'm in solo today and There you had uh, Tom Cotton explaining a little bit of what's gone on here. Just so you know, there was some agreement among Senate Republicans. They'd vote for the chip bill, which was a huge spending bill in favor of semiconductor and effectively microchip domestic production in this country. Right. That that, that you're going to have more chip making here in America and they're going to spend a whole bunch of money to do it. Senate Republicans went along with that, with the understanding that any piece of Build Back Better was done, right? Joe Manchin had said he wasn't going to go for it, wasn't going to work. What do you think happened right after Senate Republicans passed the chip bill? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's another spending bill that Democrats revive and Joe Manchin's going along with it. That's the double cross that Senator Cotton's referring to. And, you know, on the one hand... You get annoyed because Democrats are so utterly, contemptibly dishonest. Pelosi, Schumer, these people will just lie about anything. They have no integrity. It doesn't matter. But on the other hand, I also want to say, do Republicans have to get schooled like this over and over again? Are we really to believe that they didn't know they were going to be double-crossed? Shouldn't they have assumed? You're dealing with Democrats. You're senators. You see how these people operate all the time. I, you need a lesson in this again? I don't know. I think maybe they they just wanted to go with the chip bill, and now they're saying, oh, but they promised us they wouldn't do the big, bad Biden bill. And they did, or they are doing it, I should say. What does it do? $369 billion invested in energy climate programs. Oh, you know. 300 billion here, 300 billion there starts to add up after a while, doesn't it? This is some of the Green New Deal, folks. This is some of Biden's crappy Build Back Better idea coming through. It's terrible for the economy, but they're doing it. Biden finishing up here his address to the nation about the recession that we're in, but they just want to talk about legislation. Oh, gosh, there's so much to be said about this. I've been watching it all. Let's join the biden speech in progress here if we can bring it up there mike i hope that the house is going to pass this bill today my plea is put politics aside get it done we need to lower the cost of automobiles appliances smartphones consumer electronics and so much more and you can't do it all of these things are powered almost everything in our lives is powered by these semiconductors and tiny computer chips the size of a fingernail tip Look, we should pass this today and get moving. 
I know the compromise on the inflation bill doesn't include everything that I've been pushing for since I got to office. For example, I'm going to keep fighting for in the future to bring down the cost of things for working families and middle class families that matter by providing for affordable and accessible things like affordable child care, affordable elder care, preschool, the cost of preschool, housing. All right. Keeping Let's, students we, we, we get it. The we get the idea. I just. I took some notes uh, while we were in uh, commercial break there. Biden got into the, most of what he's talking about. Uh, let's all understand this for what it is, folks. This was all planned. This legislation, this was the plan all along, obviously. This has been the plan for, for days, if not weeks, that on the day the, the Biden recession is official, Joe Manchin suddenly caves and they have this scaled down, build back, a little bit better, a version of the Build Back Better bill, uh, which is exactly what this is. And the fact that they're calling it an anti, the Anti-Inflation Act or something like that is is absolutely absurd. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. This, though, is an important moment because as you hear Biden uh, blathering on about this, and let's let's all be very honest. The only jobs Joe Biden really knows how to create are for family members like Hunter who are selling influence to countries like China and to corrupt Ukrainian oligarchs. He's not really a job creator. He's a lifelong bureaucrat. So he keeps saying we're going to bring down the price of we're going to bring down the price of it's actually not the job of government to set prices. That's called price controls. And it is really bad for an economy and it creates all kinds of distortions in the market and this is what i mentioned venezuela in the last hour one of the one of the worst things that they, they did a lot of bad things in venezuela remember it went from a pretty wealthy country third wealthiest in the western hemisphere in the 90s to a place with true hyperinflation and people losing weight because they can't even get enough calories because there's no food on the shelves what do they do there well they obviously made a lot of poor decisions. They ran a, an economy rooted in social justice and not functioning markets. You know, they decided to become truly socialist in so many of the ways that they approached everything, but they set price controls. They said, okay, this is no longer the price of, of bread, the price of milk, the price of a washing machine is what we say it is. You know what that results in? No washing machines. No bread, no milk, or the black market then actually has people paying the real price for it. So this idea that Biden, at a time of inflation, which is caused by government monetary policy, should just be telling us that they're going to set prices lower for things, which is a huge part of this. They're saying, oh, they're going to have a a cap on the price of prescription drugs, $2,000 a year for those who are in Medicare. Obviously, this is meant to get seniors who are getting crushed right now by the Biden economy, by the Biden recession, to say, oh, well, hold on a second. At least I'll be saving on, on, your, on my prescriptions. First of all, you're not going to be saving on anything else, even with this bill. And second of all, well, what happens to the actual price of those uh, of the pharmaceuticals? Now, that's the thing that they're going to focus on. That's what they're going to tell you is a place of of real uh, benefit. They're going to spend a lot less time on the hundred and twenty five billion dollars that they think they're going to get from increased IRS enforcement. They're going to sick the tax man on you. That's the plan. They're going to squeeze more. at We're in a recession and the Democrats just passed a or are passing a bill that is going to have the IRS go after you much more aggressively than they have in the past. So that's a part of this that I think everybody should be aware of. But the, but the really insane stuff, and isn't it all just so clear, right? It, they, they knew they had to throw something together. They had to pull something together. So on the day we are in the Biden recession, they pass this Biden legislation through reconciliation, mind you, which is really a budget gimmick. It shouldn't be used for things like this, but that's what they do. You will recall they even used reconciliation to get a part of Obamacare through, not all of it, but a part of it through. Um, And and this is now a standard that they've set in D.C. where the Democrats, when they really want something, they just change the rules or find some loophole, find some way 
to sneak it through. And then they tell us how popular it is and how everybody wants it. Well, why, why can't you get more votes for it if it's so popular, if the American people want it so badly? But the climate crisis component of this, I just want every person in America to know that at a time when you're paying uh, record high gas prices, we still have not caught up to our domestic energy production that we had before the pandemic. We have a Democrat party that is ludicrously opposed to fossil fuels and to the reality of our need for oil and natural gas to have a modern economy, to have a high standard of living, to be energy independent, to have more leverage around the world when it comes to national security and comes to international commerce. They hate this stuff because it's yucky, because CO2 is so bad. They have convinced themselves of this. And we are all supposed to go along willingly with the $360 billion they're going to spend. Biden said in his speech just now, the most consequential, he called it, or significant rather, the most significant bill in history to address the climate crisis, 300 and something billion dollars, 360 plus billion dollars of spending. And he even said the words, you know what's coming, wind, solar, this is a religious belief for Democrats. They, they will invoke the Defense Production Act in the Biden administration for solar panels. But when it comes to gas, every gas uh, company CEO you speak to, everybody who understands the international energy markets will tell you that the Biden regime is psychotically, deeply ideologically opposed to fossil fuels. And we are all poorer as a result. As a country, our national security and economic status is harmed by this. It just is. They can tell you as much as they want about, oh, we're going to have the clean energy of the future. They're talking about in this bill, you know, a huge reduction in CO2 by 2030 and, and carbon zero by 2050. These people are out of their mind. These Democrats and these are senators. They are out of their minds if they believe this. It's just really tough to tell. Are they that reckless? Are they such frauds that they pretend to believe this stuff while they purchase beachfront property, while they make sure that they live as close to the water as possible, even though, hmm, I thought we we're supposed to be under the water. Even got a shout out in that Biden speech to Al Gore. Even Al Gore says it's good. Oh, well, then you know it's crap. If Al Gore likes it, this is a whole bunch of taxpayer money going toward Green New Deal boondoggles. This is going to be Solyndra on steroids. You remember Solyndra? That was under the Obama administration. It was the loan guarantees, courtesy of the taxpayer, for a solar panel company that was losing money on every unit it sold. There's an old joke that they were losing money on units, but they'd make it up on volume. You know, that's the plan of a bad business. That was what Solyndra was doing. They were selling solar panels at a loss. And the federal government uh, backstopped this company under Obama to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. And for what? Well, because it makes them feel like they're doing more to, doing more to stop all the CO2 emissions. Notice how Tesla, Elon Musk's company, and Elon has said this, if you really are opposed to CO2, you would constantly be touting how Tesla has really revolutionized the electric car market, made them things that people want to drive. Not that they drive so they can say to their neighbors, look at me, I'm stopping the global warming and you're not. They're actually cool vehicles that function well, that go fast, that have good electronics, etc. But they hate Elon Musk. Why? Because Elon Musk isn't one of these climate drones who wanders around bemoaning how everybody else needs to be riding on a bicycle and needs to be eating, eating worms and insects because beef creates too much CO2. You may not have seen this, but the tyrant to the north, Justin Trudeau up in Canada, he saw what's going on in the Netherlands with the farmers there. Remember, Netherlands, the second biggest exporter of agricultural products in the world. It's a tiny country. It's a pretty amazing statistic, isn't it? And the, so the farmers are a big deal there. Big deal for the economy, big deal globally. 
um, at a time when we're already worried about the supply chain and how it will affect food, wheat prices, and all the rest of it. Trudeau saw what's gone on over the Netherlands. He goes, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, let's do that in Canada. And now he's pushing to have a similar mandate in Canada that would essentially put a lot of farmers either out of business or dramatically reduce their ability to produce. Why? Climate change. Don't forget for one second. And I was saying this in the beginning, those of you who were listening to uh, the Buck Sexton show back in 2020 when I was doing radio before I teamed up with Clay, know this. Uh, The whole pandemic lockdown, listen to the science, emergency, emergency, shut up, do what we tell you movement that they created under the broad rubric of uh, Fauciism. They aren't going to just stop with the virus. And of course, they're trying to resurrect that plan right now with the next variant. They also want to do that on climate. This is why they use phrases constantly like an existential crisis. An existential crisis is something you can effectively do anything to address because nothing could be more important than that. Nothing could be more important including the U.S. economy, including your ability to pay your bills, including growth, productivity, prosperity, economic freedom. None of that to a true believer Democrat can get in the way of the Green New Deal agenda because they are, in their minds, saving the planet. And if you think that's any kind of exaggeration, At this moment in time, we have just entered 0.9% for the second quarter down, 1.6% down in the first quarter. We are in the Biden recession. And what do they do in this moment? They try to buy off the votes of seniors with a promise to reduce their uh, their prescription drugs while everything else is more expensive. Your mortgage is more expensive. Everything else is, is is getting worse right now. The cost of groceries, cost of gas. To try to buy off seniors with this prescription drug plan uh, while they also spend $369 billion on completely worthless and absurd climate pet projects. That's how devoted to this they are. In this moment, this is what the Biden regime does. Uh, Look, we have to absolutely crush them in the midterms. You have to take away Biden's ability to continue to do damage Because a a reasonable person would see what the Biden policies have done up to this point and change course. You know what today was? Hey, yeah, we're in a recession. You know what we're doing? Doubling down on Bidenism, peasants. Deal with it. Doubling down right now. That's what they just announced to you. That's what they're doing. And all that stuff about Joe Manchin being sane and all. West Virginia, what are you doing? And no West Virginian should ever cast a vote for Joe Manchin again. What are you doing voting for that guy? You're a red state. It's ridiculous.